if they think feeding the homeless is unhygienic, uh, then they've never been at a mosh pit at a thrice concert. Okay, that is that's filled with sweat and spit <laughs> and blood. Never worked in a restaurant either. Yeah. Okay. Which is also filled with sweat and spit, exactly. and blood <laughs> and ejaculate, and sometimes probably <laughs> also poop, because <laughs> because some of the songs they play are very loud and and startling. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm your host, Krish Mohan. Hey, a few quick things before we jump into the new episode you're about to check out here. Uh, as you may notice, there are some uh, laughs that you hear in the backdrop, and that is because this episode was filmed in front of a live virtual audience over Zoom. Uh, these shows happen once a month, and if you want to be a part of of the live virtual audience, you can do so by grabbing tickets to one of the upcoming shows uh, right now. They happen on the last Friday of every single month, and it's a new show every time that involves some storytelling and, of course, the socially conscious comedy that you guys uh, are, are about to enjoy in, in just a few minutes. And sometimes there will be some special guests kicking the show off, so it's something that you guys don't want to miss. So if you want to grab tickets, you can do so over at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Dot com. And that's pretty much the one-stop shop for all things Krish Mohan. So if you enjoy these videos and you want to check out more things that I have put out there, uh, you can check out my live stand-up comedy albums. You can check out uh, all of the past v episodes of this show, uh, my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk, and join us on the live streams uh, when I stream on Mondays through Wednesdays and Fridays at 12.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time. So again, go check everything out at krishmohanhaha.com. That's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. All right, now onwards to the episode. But as if the negative stigmas against homelessness weren't enough, don't worry. Most states have basically made it illegal to be homeless. And I might be going on a huge limb here, but I'm going to say it anyway. I feel like if we're going to make homelessness illegal, it should also be double illegal to create that fucking problem. Right now, landlords have filed over 160,000 eviction notices in 27 cities alone during the pandemic. Look, at this point, shouldn't we all just call landlords that want to evict people in the middle of a pandemic super spreaders? considering that their actions will likely lead to folks getting COVID-19. Right now, the homeless population has some of the highest risks of catching and spreading COVID. And American capitalism wants to create more of them, proving that capitalism is the ultimate virus. Number one, right? From spikes under bridges to making park benches less accessible, state after state is making homelessness illegal instead of finding actual solutions to the problem. And I'm not sure what the expectation there is. Like, do they expect homeless people to see these spikes and just go, oh, boy, well, shit, they got me here, huh? Well, I guess I'll just go back to that apartment I've been holding out on and give up on this Jack Kerouac fantasy here. No hobo life for me. <laughs> What is the fucking point? Look, and things are so desperate for the homeless sometimes that they commit petty crimes so that they can be hauled away to a jail cell just to get a bed for a night or two. 18% of Alaskans who are homeless live unsheltered. Now, a lot of people here will just commit a petty crime to get thrown in jail intentionally so they're warm. And then they get out and then they do it all over again. <laughs> A system that requires people to break laws to get a bed and two square meals 
is a broken fucking system. The most insane of anti-homeless laws are the ones that make feeding the homeless illegal. And there are multiple states that have decided to make it illegal to feed the homeless. And I can understand Florida making feeding the homelessness illegal, right? I get that, you know, because they're shaped like a dick and henceforth they'll act like one, you know? <laughs> but the rest of the states, they don't have an excuse. They don't have an excuse at all. Fortunately, there are organizations that have resisted this law from the dark ages, one of them being the organization called Food Not Bombs. And since the 1980s, they have been arrested by cops on multiple occasions for feeding the homeless and even battled with politicians like Nancy Pelosi to ensure that the homeless are just taken care of. And things got so bad in the early days of Food Not Bombs that volunteers had to send decoy food to outsmart the cops. <laughs> we would um, sneak food in through parking garages and so on. Um, the decoy food would get arrested. Um, then there'd be a second wave of decoy food that'd get arrested. And then we'd come with all the food. Now, the only time they, they uh, we used to have another program called uh, Risk Arrest One Day a, a Month with Food Not Bombs. And so we'd have community groups that would come and, and get arrested. Um, and so there was like, uh, you know, anarchist groups and so on. But when the Lawyers Guild came out, they just arrested the people that came to eat instead and uh, didn't arrest the lawyers. Now, the issue the cops had with Food Not Bombs was a lack of permits, right? So that's what they did. They went and got some permits. Well, they say that we don't have a permit. But after a huge... As, as if in the so-called freest country in the world, which is bullshit, but as if in the freest country in the world, you should have to get a permit to give someone food. Yeah, to get permission. So that San Francisco, that was... Um, we litigated in state and federal court. Um, we uh, we, we uh, played their game to the T to prove that it had nothing to do with a permit. And, uh, and so after uh, um, even maybe two years or so, eventually it became clear that there was a no, that that wasn't the issue. They didn't want people, they didn't want the public to see us feeding people and doing it on our own without any uh, interaction with the government, not needing their, you know, they were, this was the most liberal Democrats, this is Nancy Pelosi and, and those people, Feinstein, right? And, uh, you know, they're supposed to be making sure everybody has food, but yet they have like all these thousands of people living outside on the streets, outside their office building, and we're feeding them. And so it kind of puts a, a, um, a bad look on liberal Democrats to be feeding right. people out on the streets. Right. I think uh, Noam Chomsky coined the expression, the threat of the good example. Yeah. Human beings are uncomfortable with just general niceness for the sake of niceness, aren't we? In a society built on hyper-individualism and paranoia, kindness is seen as criminal behavior instead of just an example we can all live by. Yikes. <laughs> right? Yeah, look, a major reason the elected officials didn't want food not bombs to feed people is after people eat, they poop. We, um, you know, they would say, well, we got to get rid of food not bombs. They're feeding people. And then afterwards, they poop. And this is a nightmare. So we've got to get rid of food up on. What? So, they, wait, so, you're, you're telling me that eating results in something afterwards? Yeah. So this was so such a, a, a shocker that um, we thought, well, we'll just rent a portable toilet then. Well, it didn't take but one afternoon for the city to come and confiscate the por portable toilet. <laughs> there you have it, folks. We did it. OK, there is now an official government order that says everybody poops. OK, look, I'm glad that our elected officials are answering the tough questions. Hey, take that, Neil deGrasse Tyson, with your fucking cosmos and, and telescopes. Right. The government just answered one of the largest questions in the universe. Do we all poop? And, <laughs> and the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. We sure do all poop. All right. So, so let's pack it up. I think we're done here. Let's get these people a raise and we'll, we'll move on to the next problem. Another excuse that the oligarchs had with food, not bombs, was that feeding the homeless was unhygienic. 
the argument was that it's not uh, it's not hygienic, it's not sterile or something to be feeding people. It's uh, safe. Yeah, look, if they think feeding the homeless is unhygienic, uh, then they've never been at a mosh pit at a thrice concert. Okay, that is that's filled with sweat and spit <laughs> and blood. Never worked in a restaurant either. Yeah. Okay. Which is also filled with sweat and spit exactly. and blood <laughs> and ejaculate and sometimes probably <laughs> also poop because <laughs> because some of the songs they play are very loud and and startling. So, look, Food Not Bombs does not encourage people to go dumpster diving. They recommend that you get your food from grocery stores and restaurants that would throw the food away in excess. 40% of the food globally goes to waste. Globally, 40% goes to waste. And most of that food is still good to eat. So why not let it go to those that need it instead of the dumpster, right? Food Not Bombs is alleviating one of the most stressful aspects of homeless life, finding food. And this idea is so radical and dangerous that the FBI spied on them and deemed them one of the most dangerous terrorist organizations in the country. So, yeah, we've, I've, I've had a bit of interest in, uh, in FBI surveillance since we've been the target. Uh, there was a State Department uh, lecture at Tufts University in uh, April of 2009 where they compared the people that serve free vegan meals in the uh, parks to Al-Qaeda, who's more dangerous? And um, they <laughs> determined that Al-Qaeda probably would not last another 30 years, but the people with the ve serving the vegan meals would probably go on another 30, which is uh, um, going to be true. And, uh, and, the, um, and that they are indigenous to their communities, they're loved by the local people, and that the uh, community might insist that the military spending be diverted to education, healthcare, and other social services. Dear and, God, if, if that were to happen, <laughs> all is lost. Yes. Uh, so, uh, you know, I got blacklisted uh, on uh, 9-14 after 9-11. I was uh, uh, banned from working in the United States after that. And, um, you know, so it's been some they, pretty interesting how things. How did they justify that? They said that I was the founder of, an, of a terrorist organization called Food Not Bombs. <laughs> that uh, was trying to undermine the, um, uh, the uh, military by encouraging people to think money should go to food and not to bombs. So that was the problem there. <laughs> Look, I know, okay, I'm, I'm laughing at how ridiculous that is, but I, I, there, there might be some folks that are, are shocked by this, right? But don't forget, the FBI started getting more aggressive towards the Black Panthers after they successfully started feeding kids. The FBI is basically anti-food and at this point serves absolutely no purpose, right? Look, the FBI is worse than Marie Antoinette, all right? At least that bitch wanted people to eat cake. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> But look, you got states like California that are breaking up homeless encampments that have sprung up. I mean, for fuck's sake, guys, what the hell do you want these people to do, right? They can't afford housing because you need to be Google rich to live there and you ruin park benches. So yeah, they started camping. You know, if cops and politicians really hate these homeless encampments, a simple solution would be to cancel rents instead of bailing out the banks for $6 trillion and approving an 800 dollars billion dollar military budget that could have covered people's rents for a year or like 12. That's an astronomical amount of money. Look, I have a rule and I think it's a pretty good rule. Uh, you can bail out the banks and Wall Streets for upwards of six trillion dollars, but all the debt has to be erased and rent should be paid up by the banks, right? Kind of think that's not a bad rule. I think they should pay uh, one year of uh, one year worth of rent for every war that they funded. Not too bad, right? I think it's a pretty fair trade off. You know, you want war and government handoff uh, handouts, then that's great. We want no rents and no debt. And yes, we all will get to shoot Dick Cheney in the face with buckshot just once, right? I feel like that's 
that's a fair fair trade off. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> Look, everybody just chill out, right? He'll be fine. All right. He's got Rush Limbaugh's heart now. He's going to be okay. The reality is that making homelessness and food illegal isn't a solution to fix this problem. That's like stubbing your toe on the chair and then kicking that chair. You haven't fixed the fucking problem and now your leg is bleeding. That's what's happening. If America wants to fix the homelessness problem, they're going to have to stop kicking them when they're already down. And that has been your Forkful of Noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you hit that like button and hit that share button. Get the word out uh, on YouTube and Facebook. This kind of content is pretty often suppressed and sometimes even gets deleted from their site. So it's very important that uh, you guys hit the like and the shares. That always helps us uh, find new viewers on the algorithm. And if you're trying to subvert censorship the best place to do that is rockfin uh, rockfin is the blockchain cryptocurrency video platform site that is all about helping content creators earn an income from what they create and there's absolutely no censorship on that platform so if you want to follow me on rockfin you can follow me at uh, rockfin.com slash krishmohan ha ha and if you want much more content, uh, go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. Uh, you can find all my stand-up comedy albums there. You can find past episodes of this show. Uh, if you missed a live stream, they're up on the website there. You can catch past episodes of my interview podcast, Taboo Table Talk. And you can make a donation. If, you, if you're on stable financial ground and you want to help support the show financially, you can do so directly on my website by making a either a one-time donation, which acts as, uh, you know, some super chats, uh, as it were, or you can become a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets to the virtual and when live comedy comes back, live comedy shows, as well as additional bonus content, which includes stand-up comedy shows, uh, and you can ask me questions uh, and and leave comments for me as, um, as a sustaining member as well. So once again, you can go do that over at krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. Thank you very much for tuning in, and there will be a new episode next week, so stay tuned.